Hey Al Warrior and welcome to the Townsfolk Show, a daily show in which we get into the recent events surrounding Albion Online. Today we have some amazing kills, an incredibly lucky gatherer and a very important discussion about the Albion Online European server, which may or may not be the death of Albion Online. If that sounds interesting, well, stay tuned. Hat, I want to start with a question as to you. What do you get whenever you pair a permastun with a fiery tornado? Oh, it's easy, wizard. You get Nazari stream. Spot on. Just look at this beautiful, beautiful one shot call. Look at this. That's it. Look at Nazari. Oh my gosh, what? What? <laughs> Straight up. I'm not even there and I'm hyped up. This is so much hype. <laughs> They're so happy. Yo, loot it up quick. Loot it, loot it. That is awesome. That is awesome. GG's to Nazori and his friend over there. Shout out to both of them. Link for everybody's channel will be in the description down below. So make sure to check them out so that you can witness those moments happening live. Next in line, we have Mean Shock, a creator showcased more than anybody else, to be honest, on this channel. See, Wizard, you call it showcased. I call it milk. As I was saying, Mean Shock woke up and chose violence. And let me tell you, violence it was. Just look at this beautiful, beautiful solo clap. Go just now. Had the next clip has a fire tornado, but there's no Nazori in sight. Oh, it's a doubt of the Christy. Truly. That's what you get for stealing the croissant. You damn French teeter. <laughs> Who cares about the croissant hat? Just look at this beautiful, beautiful clap. <laughs> it was great. It was great. Now let's go a little bit more on the luckier side of things and talk about the gatherer who managed to win some pretty big money over there. Check this out and also watch his reaction. What reaction? Shut up, Ed. He's focused, all right? I'm still waiting for the reaction. Shut up, Hat. Be nice. Where's the reaction, though? You lied to me. Shut up, Hat. You know, Hat, he was just focused over there. Oh, yes, yeah, Zingli, you're focused on how you're constituted. Pretty much. Hat, let me show you a beautiful clap. Check this out right here. Look on the north side. <laughs> just check that out. Just look at that, man. They all <laughs> melted. Look at that. Like, they all just melted. Just look at their HPs right over there. Right over there. Boom. Boom. Perfect pause. Look at that. They all just melted. It is beautiful, wizard. But I expected something differently. Like what? You know, nor uh, skin. Oh, no, no, no. No, it's not that kind of clap. No, hat. No, don't even think about that. Well, to this uh, we are getting a lot of skin from Dodd Hodnot over there. Shut up, Ed. Now, Adventures, those were amazing clips, and I strongly suggest you check out the creators of those clips in the description down below so that you can witness those moments happening live. But enough clips for today. Let's see what the townsfolk themselves are saying. So let's jump on the reddits of Albion Online. Now, the first topic that I want to approach today is a dramatic one. There's a lot that can be said about this, so I'm not going to try to spend too much time on it because I could make a whole show just talking about this. And it's the question, the ever-asked question, will the Albion Online European server be the end of Albion Online? And it's essentially a person presenting his concerns about how the European server might actually affect the game as a whole. He's saying that the game is already tedious enough when it comes to progressing your character and having to restart an already impossible grind seems like a terrible plan that will ultimately tear the community apart rather than help it grow and then uh, the next thing that he says which is something that i very much agree with is that the game shines whenever you have just one server whenever everybody plays on the same server and i do agree this was a huge marketing deal for sbi when it comes to marketing this game like they were presenting it as a one world one server game as a matter of fact if you actually just go right now and launch the game you're gonna see that at the bottom it says something like one world many devices or something like that so it was a huge marketing tool for sbi because honestly in my opinion all mmorpgs should have just one server that would be amazing but unfortunately for albion online that is impossible as explained by robin hinkies in a post right here uh, this is essentially a post made by a person proposing this very idea like how could the game run on multiple servers while still allowing everybody to play on the same exact world and the person is proposing continents 
uh, that are being ran on separate servers while everybody can play together for example if i want to play with an asian friend i can move to the asian server while still being in the same exact world all of a sudden i'm going to be zoning from one area to the other and i see my ping growing as i approach the area of the asian server because different areas of the map or different continents of the map could be ran by different servers while still allowing players from other servers to simply transition between them sacrificing their ping now robin hing is the game director himself replied this is actually a very similar idea to what we originally imagined the problem is a technical one albion has many central services which communicate with each game server sometimes there is a back and forth between these services this is absolutely fine if the service and the game server are on low latency connection within a data center even five times back and forth can be resolved within milliseconds the problem comes when you introduce a significant latency between the central service and the game server. Suddenly, this request can take seconds to resolve and essentially what he goes on to say is that this will make the game feel, uh, well, pretty unplayable because of the latency that this creates. And as a conclusion, he says, I guess that's a lesson for future MMO developers that consider global cross-server functionality to ensure an effective way to deal with these issues is engineered in from the get-go. So essentially, it is too late to add a mega server, if you want to call it like that or multiple servers that run the same exact world. And now I want you to understand something, adventurers, and I feel like it's very, very important that we get this straight. So, right now we have this situation. Albion Online used to have just one server on the West area. For Albion West players, this was absolutely playable. But for Albion East players, this was unplayable. I've seen people even with 600 ping. It is unplayable, especially if you're on a PvP. But even if you don't, like, as long as you're not doing market play, PvE and PvP is unplayable with 600 ping. I would say with anything more than 300 ping. It's just unplayable. So they simply cannot play this game. So now you have two options. Leave them. Middle finger and leave them. Ignore them. Or find a solution. That solution is clearly not to make a mega server, as explained by Robin Hinkies himself. Again, probably they didn't expect the game to be so popular. I'm pretty sure this is the first game they've ever developed as SBI. It was a Kickstarter project, so I don't think they had all the experience required to think about the future, like the distant future of this game. So that's not an option. And then the second option, add an Eastern server. And all of a sudden, the Eastern server makes the game playable for Eastern players. Now, Whenever the Albion Online E server launched, people used to say the exact same things. Oh, this is the death of Albion. Oh, they're separating the player base. Oh, they're dividing the player base. We're gonna die, we're gonna die, we're gonna die. And that does not mean that this person is wrong. Maybe it's different for the European server. But I just want to point out some facts. And I'm gonna look in the past so that we can see those facts. Albion Online East made a lot of players mad. Some players that were playing on the Albion West server as Eastern players transitioned from one server to the other and they were mad about this they wanted character transfers they were complaining about restarting their progression they were complaining about restarting their grind they were complaining about losing their achievements their skins everything like that they were just as mad as some people are right now yet it did not matter because the game gained twice as much players we went from 150k active daily players which by the way that's pretty damn good to 300k active daily players now what i'm trying to say with this is that sometimes sacrifices have to be made and it's never pleasant i want you to understand me here if let's say you have 20 percent uh, let's say you have 20 percent 25 percent just make it uh, you know a little bit easier to follow 25 percent of the west uh, server population were asian people so east players 20 percent of them were east players okay if you made those 25 percent mad and let's say every single one of them was mad it did not matter because the population doubled those were not just existing players those were players that simply appeared in the game because all of a sudden the game became playable for them now i'm not saying disregard the existing players but i'm just saying if you need to make a tough decision and you know this tough decision will make people mad try to choose to make as little people mad as possible and let's say if every single asian player from the albion west server which were a minority at the time because again the game was pretty unplayable in that situation but if every single one of them was mad it did not matter for the health of the game because it was objectively a good decision now when it comes to the west server a lot of people are arguing and they might have a point that the west server has a lot more uh, of a european population compared to the east server now i do believe that to be the case because you have to understand a little a bit how this works so we have three servers this is west right here this is east right here and this is europe 
right here. I'm just gonna like that. Perfect. This is Europe right there. Now, you have to understand something. The decision of making the server in the West was a bad decision. But I guess they did not see how the future would unfold. That's what you get for not consulting with a mighty wizard. Because the fact is, if you make the server over here, people over here are gonna have amazing ping. People in Europe are gonna have decent ping. And people in Asia, they're not gonna be able to play this game, ever. Whereas if you wanna make a server, just one server, and you place it in Europe, well, maybe not all the West area, but half of it can play this game, and half of Asia can also play this game. M making the server in the West, in Washington DC, was a bad decision. And you have to understand this bad decision has to be solved somehow. And the best way to solve it right now in the current situation is to create multiple servers. And that's what they're doing. Now, what am I expecting from the European server launch? I'm expecting a doubling of this number. And I have arguments as to why. And I'm, sh I'm gonna show you those arguments. If you go right now on YouTube and you search for the Albion Online coming to Europe trailer, it got 1.7 million views. The old trailer, which for some reason was removed from the Albion channel, had less than 500k views. This generate, and by the way, you can uh, somewhat estimate that also based on the um, announcements that were made at that time, like, Trust me when I say, based on the sources that I have, which may or may not be fully truthful sources, I'm not entirely sure because, again, I couldn't fully check, but based on what I've heard, that video uh, got around 400 something K, 450, let's say less than 500 K views. Whereas this one got 1.7 million views. Now, I know what you're gonna be saying. Hey, mock views does not mean players. That's true, but that's how you learn about the game. You get a commercial, you get an ad that plays, you see that ad, you get hyped up for the game and you want to play it as well. That's how it works. This is the most important part because you can have the best game ever with no advertising and nobody's going to play it. Or the worst game ever with some advertising and some people are going to play it. Look at Only Up. Only Up was objectively a bad game. But it had good advertising, it had a lot of people having fun in it, so yeah, might as well. Look at Little Company. Little Company is not a groundbreaking game, it just relies itself on the community. And it succeeded thanks to the community. Now, having an online presence is not the only important thing, but it's very much important. And if the old trailer, with less than 500,000 views generated in a couple of months, managed to generate so many players for Albion, how will this one do? How will this one? Now again, I'm not entirely sure how many views the old trailer had, as I'm just basing this off of a source. Uh, it, it may or may not be a reliable one, I do not know. But assuming that's true, well, look at this right here. Look at this right here. And last but not least, you have to understand that this is an objectively good decision for the game that is gonna take the game into a much better spot, because the biggest problem and the biggest reason why people don't play Albion is lag. And right now, the whole world, for the most part, can play Albion at a decent level. For the most part, every single person that wants to play, again, not really everybody, but for the most part, we can play Albion from wherever you are. And a somewhat of a lag-free experience. It very much depends. There should still be a South American server. Maybe there should be an Australian server. There should be some more servers made. But um, as of right now, this is one of the best decisions made in a while. And whenever a new server comes up, that's also gonna be the best decision made in a while. You have to understand, this makes the game playable. And you don't feel like the game needs this because it's not for you. It's for the people who have 600 ping, 500 ping, 300 ping. And even if you're mad about it, you have to understand that in the bigger scheme of things, you're not that important. And I'm not that important. We're not that important because those updates are not targeting the people that can play the game. They're targeting the people who when they see 150 ping, they go, oh, that's way too much. I don't care it's green. That's way too much. Because under normal circumstances, that is way too much. And this is who this update targets. Yes, we might be mad about it because it's not for us. Now, will the West server die out? This is the elephant in the room. I don't know, but I do think so. I do think so. Because again, making the server in the West was a pretty bad decision. And as any bad decision, it has to be solved and it's gonna make people mad. It might die. I will be absolutely honest with you, it might die, but that does not mean the game dies. See, we need to separate those, those things. I think the game will thrive. I think the European server and the Asian server will also bring people over to the West server. But initially, the server will absolutely feel dead and I can only hope that it's not gonna remain like that. But even if it remains like that, with the population increase from this server and this server, the game as a whole will do amazing. Now, will you be mad as a West server player? Absolutely. Will I be mad? Absolutely. 
but ultimately we have to separate our emotions from the objective facts and the objective facts are this was a very good decision the first time it was made and it's going to be an even better decision the second time it's made mark my words and hold me accountable if i'm wrong i think this number will double i think this number will double i think albion will reach around 25k viewers on twitch and it's going to stabilize at around uh, around 20,000, like from then onward and i think the game will reach 600k players peak stabilizing at around 500 something like that mark my words if i'm wrong you know that i take full responsibility for everything that i say but i genuinely believe this is going to be an amazing decision for the game thank you so much for paying me a visit in the milking inn there's not a lot of travelers that venture this deep into the woods nowadays if you've enjoyed this discussion that we had well you're surely gonna enjoy that one as well so why don't you check it out i'll meet you over the traveler but if you decide you've had enough for today well until the next time we meet each other i wish you safe travels